Hi, I'm Quentz. Welcome to the ninth in my series of reviews for season one of The Playdate, Panic's handheld gaming console. Each week, two brand new games from different developers appear like magic on your Playdate system. And week nine's games are Inventory Hero and Spellcorked. Stepping up first is Inventory Hero, another of Panic's own internal game designs. This is what I might describe as an RPG simulator. In fact, I will, I did. You follow your character as they progress through various side-scrolling worlds, facing off against hordes of enemies, but you're not directly controlling them. You're not choosing attacks, you're not asking NPCs for quests, you're not doing any of that stuff. The only thing you have to worry about is your inventory, as shown at the bottom half of the screen. Every time an enemy takes a hit, they drop an item, and it's up to you to decide if you want to equip it, trash it, or do nothing and save it for later. And that's it. Your job is pretty simple. Most of the items you get will be armor or weapons with different number ratings to indicate how effective they are. You'll also get some health recovery items, and then there's trash, just random junk that exists to take up space. Inventory Hero starts off slow and pretty straightforward. Equip stuff you can equip, trash stuff you can't, and save health potions for when you need them. And indeed, that strategy is pretty much consistent throughout the entire experience, but things do speed up the longer you play, and that's when it starts to get trickier. You'll have to consider the value of each equipable item the more you find, and to make sure you're not replacing what you have with something worse. On the other hand, equipment does break after a while, so sometimes it might be worth equipping something that's just a little bit worse because the thing that you currently have maybe is gonna break soon and you don't wanna worry about missing that window and not having anything equipped at all. And these decisions aren't really too difficult to make, but when you're getting a new item every few seconds, it's kind of a lot to take in. Sometimes the biggest struggle is just keeping room in your inventory for new stuff and being forced to decide what you want to trash from a selection of things you like. Then of course there are some items with strange effects, like rabbits, which will breed rapidly if you get too many of them, forcing you to throw them out as fast as you can, lest you lose all of your precious cargo. If you've kept up with the gaming world as of late, you might recognize this passive style of gameplay that's become more popularized recently. I think dating back to games I remember browser games like Cookie Clicker, or more recently, Loop Hero, which this game has a lot in common with, I don't think by sheer coincidence. Now, where Loop Hero had lots of things to unlock and a true system of progression, Inventory Hero is just about playing until you can't play anymore and admiring the high score, the level that you managed to reach at the end of it. Nothing carries over between plays, there's no upgrades or anything like that, and you pretty much encounter the same enemies and worlds each time you play, although of course the items you get are heavily randomized. And that's the unfortunate thing about Inventory Hero is that after one or two plays, you've pretty much seen everything the game has to offer. It's got the core gameplay down of what should be an addictive organization sim, but it just isn't deep enough to keep you coming back for more. Like I said, it gets faster, but nothing about the experience ever really changes. On some runs, I did better than others, but I don't know if I can say for sure that it's because I was getting better at the game or if it was just random luck of what items I ran into. I never really felt like I developed or improved on my strategies or anything like that. I was always just kind of doing the same thing and sometimes I'd die sooner rather than later uh, for reasons that seem to me to be mostly out of my control. I think there's really just one way to play this game and as long as you're fast enough and you get enough health potions to keep yourself alive when it gets tough, you'll do fine. Because of that, the game wore out its welcome for me pretty quickly. It does have a cute, fun art style, it's worth pointing out, uh, but that almost feels a little wasted when you're spending most of your time focusing on the bottom half of the screen. You can't really afford to watch and enjoy that aspect of it. So Mark Inventory Hero Down is another Playdate game with a great foundation that unfortunately just doesn't go far enough to retain my interest. It is a neat game the first few times you play it though. It does fit the bill for quick play sessions on the go. Great for doing when you've got something else going on in the background. You don't have to pay full attention to it if that's your jam. And you might get more out of it if you've got someone else to compete with for high scores. 
Now let's unpack Spellcorked, which was developed by Jada Gibbs and Nick and Ryan Splendor. Spellcorked makes a good sister game to Inventory Hero because it's also about managing magical items without having to mess about with any of the actual adventuring. In this one, you're a witch whose job is brewing potions in order to fulfill requests for clients with various needs. Each potion requires one or two ingredients, and each ingredient can be prepared in a few different ways. Then you stir the ingredients up, package them, and send them off to your patron, who will give you a rating on, well, based on how accurately you fit their needs. Spellcorked is one of the best looking games I've seen on the Playdate, full of bold lines, cute characters, and some really gorgeous fluid animations. It all takes place in a single room with only a few objects and characters to interact with, but it really makes the best of it, nails the presentation, the gameplay, is pretty fun too. This one really takes advantage of the Playdate's features in ways I found satisfying and not too gimmicky. You'll use the crank to stir your potion up, of course, but you'll also use it to chop ingredients by positioning it and repositioning it quickly. It's hard to explain uh, without showing you, but it feels right. This game even uses the Playdate's built-in accelerometer, requiring you to tilt the system in order to pour your potion out into a glass. It's a great little touch, and it did trick my dumb lizard brain into temporarily believing I was pouring out actual liquid. The challenge in Spellcore comes from remembering what your client's requests are, then selecting the correct ingredients and preparing them accurately, because you won't be able to go back and reference the email they sent you while you're making the potion. You have to keep it in your head. You'll have a grimoire full of information on the ingredients, but you'll have to fill that in yourself by experimenting in order to discover each one's properties and how much they need to be ground up or whatever it is, depending on what's being asked for. There's a helpful little meter on the side that will show you exactly what range the potion is going to be in based on what you have done to your ingredient thus far, and you need to try to do it in such a way that it sticks in the specific range the client requested. At first, the process is a little confusing, but after a few days of potion making, it becomes almost second nature, and making things correctly is pretty easy, even with new, untested ingredients that become available as you play. So, Spellcork has a lot of great stuff going for it, but my biggest problem was that there just isn't enough variety in the ways in which you make the potions. At first, you're discovering new ingredients and new prep methods, and it's exciting, but there are really only three different ways to do it that are repeated across the various items. Once you've figured one out, it's just a matter of paying attention, and you hardly ever have to really think about it again. And at the end of each potion, you'll be stirring it, and you'll be pouring it, and if you do too many in a row, it starts to get real repetitive. This is definitely a game I recommend picking up now and again, because you'll get burned out if you do too much in one sitting. I was really hoping that there would be more of a focus on a storyline in this game. In the beginning, there's a good amount of dialogue, and there's a little bit of a plot that comes in the form of emails you receive, but it's very, very light, and it tapers off quickly after the introduction. I just needed some kind of downtime activity in between days, whether it be a narrative sequence or something else, so it wasn't just potion, 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 potion ad nauseum. I also wish there was a more in-depth grade system for the potions. As it is, you pretty much either make it correctly or you don't. I would have liked another layer on top of that that would really judge how well you made the thing, in addition to just remembering the correct ingredients and how much you needed to chop it. So I'm mainly frustrated because I really, really like Spellcorked, but it's just missing that one or two extra ingredients, <laughs> uh, get it, to make me really fully love it. Still, it's super charming and inventive, and it definitely stands out amongst the other Season 1 games for its style, presentation, and control methods. Both this week's games are emphasizing a weakness that I think several other Season 1 games share, which is feeling like an awesome demo or a beta for something greater that never fully materializes. Inventory Hero just doesn't have enough depth, and Spellcork needed something more too, but it does fare a lot better in my book. 
At the end of the day, it's worth remembering that these are small games on a small platform that are meant to live alongside lots of other small games. And of course, they're made by very small teams, probably with not huge budgets or anything like that. So I don't hold it against them too much for not being as in-depth as I would like them to be. But I do think some games pull it off better than others. Overall, still a pretty good week, I think. Even though I had some complaints, I, I did like both games and they will definitely keep you having fun, keep you smiling, at least for the week until next week's games come out. Let me know what you think of them in the comments if you've had the chance to play them at all. And if you want more of my reviews of season one Playdate games, hey, they're on this channel. Uh, you can poke around for them yourself or you can subscribe so that you don't miss any coming up in the future. Thanks for watching.